You've been invited to a pool party, maybe a graduation party, and while you're walking around the homeowner's property, what happens is you fall into something, you suffered a massive fracture, and now the question on your mind is, is the homeowner responsible for your injury? Would you like to learn what this is about? Come join me as I share with you this really important information. Hi, I'm Jerry Odinsky. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury trial attorney practicing law here in the state of New York. Now, when somebody gets injured on somebody else's property, one of the key questions that we need to know is, what was it that caused you to fall? Was there a defect there? Was there a hole that was closed over that nobody knew about? Was there some defect in the property or maybe a tripping hazard? What was it that actually caused you to fall? Once you know that answer, now we can look back and ask the question, did the homeowner know about this dangerous condition? Should the homeowner have gone ahead and taken steps to fix this dangerous condition before somebody got hurt? And in order to understand that, we have to identify, number one, whether the homeowner actually knew that there was a dangerous condition. That's called actual notice. Did somebody actually tell them at some point before you got hurt, hey, listen, there's a big problem on your property. If you don't fix it, somebody's going to get hurt at some point. So this way, they actually knew about a dangerous condition. Or maybe even better, somebody actually wrote a letter to the homeowner and said, listen, you better fix this problem because it's dangerous and somebody's going to get hurt. Now, what if nobody actually gave the homeowner actual notice and told them, listen, you've got a real bad problem here that needs to be fixed? Well, there's something called constructive notice, and that means that the homeowner should have known that this dangerous condition existed for a significant period of time and should have taken reasonable steps to fix it in a reasonable period of time. Many times the defense will turn around and say, hey, we never actually knew that there was a defect there, or we didn't have any clue that there was a problem. Nobody told us about it, and in the ordinary course of doing our daily things, we never saw this and were never alerted to this. So how can we be held responsible to try and fix something if we didn't know anything about it. Let me give you this scenario. Let's say there's an open hole on somebody's front lawn and what they do for a temporary measure, they put a piece of wood or plywood over it, right? And then they don't do anything about it. They don't get a contractor or a gardener or a landscaper to come and fill in the hole and take care of it. And they don't block it off with certain orange fencing to alert people that there's something dangerous here. So now let's say it's evening time and somebody happens to be walking by on the property accidentally or on purpose, and now they don't realize that the wood covering that hole has now deteriorated. Or maybe the land surrounding that hole has deteriorated because it's rained and now it's saturated. And now somebody accidentally steps on that wooden platform, boom, goes right down, suffers a significant injury. Is the homeowner going to be held responsible as a result of what occurred? Well, we can certainly make the argument that the homeowner knew constructively that having an open hole with simply a piece of plywood for a period of time can deteriorate and it's a hazard. And if you don't go ahead and set up barriers to prevent people from this particular area, it is quite possible that people walking by either intentionally or accidentally may fall in and suffer injury. And in that instance, we may be successful if we're able to show and convince not only the court but the jury that this was something that the homeowner should have known about, should have taken reasonable steps to fix, and should have done so in a timely fashion. So why do I share this great information with you? I share it with you just to give you an insight and an understanding into what goes on in a case involving a trip and fall on somebody's property. You know, I realize you probably have questions of your own about your own injury that you suffered because of your fall. Well, if your matter happened in New York and you do have legal questions, what I encourage you to do is pick up the phone and call me. I can answer your legal questions. I do this every single day and I welcome your call. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. Well, that's it for today's quick video. I'm Jerry Oginski coming to you from New York. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.